great pleasure to be with you on this Palm Sunday and I know after current restrictions the first Sunday in which the congregation of St Andrews has been able to gather in worship and I know speaking to Tom before the service began um, the first Sunday he's been back to play in about a year so a very special and moving moment I think for everybody and we're also mindful of others who may join us through the virtues of technology and so on. Uh, just as a note, um, I've, I was in two minds this morning, peddling towards Bishop Thorpe, as to whether to have a short gospel and a long sermon, or a long gospel and a short sermon. I won't take a vote as to which you would have preferred, um, but just to say that uh, we will have the longer passion gospel reading, which is on your sheet, it's Mark 15, 1 to 39. Uh, if you do wish to sit for the reading of that gospel, uh, I won't announce that again, obviously I'll announce the gospel, but please feel free, if it is more comfortable, to listen to that reading while seated, and I will say a word about it at the end. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Behold, your king comes to you, O Zion, meek and lowly, sitting upon an ass. Ride on in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your throne is the throne of God, it endures forever, and the scepter of your kingdom is a righteous scepter. You have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the Church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that, united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. If you have a palm cross, would you like to just uh, elevate that as I say the prayer of dedication and blessing upon these signs and symbols of Palm Sunday and the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we may bear them in his name, may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigned with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we're going to listen now, obviously, unfortunately, we cannot sing the hymns. Um, we can inside spiritually, uh, and I'm sure the words will be very well known.
Let us pray for a closer union with Christ in his suffering and his glory. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race, sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. As I mentioned at the start, the readings are on the second side of your uh, Redemptorist Sunday handout. And the first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 50th chapter, beginning to read at the fourth verse. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 31. The response is, into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O God of truth. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consumed with sorrow, my soul and my body also. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of my affliction, and my bones are consumed. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I have become a reproach to my enemies and even to my neighbours, an object of dread to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they flee from me. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me. I have forgotten like one that is dead, out of mind. I have become like a broken vessel. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is on every side. They scheme together against me and plot to take my life. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you will have to me and the Lord of God of truth. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I have said you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and save me for your mercy's sake. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, of the truth. Lord, let me not be confounded, for I have called upon you. But let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, that speak against the righteous with arrogance, disdain, and contempt. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. The second reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, beginning to read at the fifth verse of the second chapter. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, 
and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. And we remain seated for our second hymn to be played. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole council held a consultation. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate wondered. Now at the feast he used to release to them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he was going to do for them. And he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowds to have him released for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man whom you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas, and have scourged Jesus. He delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and plaiting a crown of thorns, they put it on him, and they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck his head with a reed, and spat upon him, and they knelt down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. 
and they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them, to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him, and the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests mocked him to one another with the scribes, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And one ran away and filling a sponge full of vinegar, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that thus breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was a son of God. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think possibly one of the uh, most startling, and certainly for me most memorable, openings of a novel is a book by Jeanette Winterson which she begins with a startlingly simple question why is the measure of love loss and I think as we meet today marking just over a year where all of us have known in different ways losses we can perhaps sense the truth within that statement, that the things that we so often and so easily have taken for granted have been denied us, whether it is the most simple thing in the world, the hug of a grandchild or the ability to travel to see somebody in another part of the world, perhaps some of those things uh, that we have experienced and including, of course, as we know, many, many more people bereaved in the last 12 months than would have been the case or, or had been the case in previous years. Um, that huge number of people who have died above the number of people who die, typically within a year within our nation and of course around the world, that figure is in millions. When we experience that void of absence, whether it is something that we want to do, that we normally would take for granted, or whether it is that person we can no longer see as we did, we do indeed know within that absence something of the breadth and the depth and the intensity of love. And for so many people across our nation, it has been and continues to be a remarkably difficult Time. And as we begin Holy Week today, in these days leading up to Maldi Thursday and Good Friday, and of course Easter, it is a story of loss. I was thinking the other day that if you set the Gospel, as often with passion plays, isn't there, there's a, a tendency to try and set this story within the contemporary 
What a different tale it would be. The crowds of Palm Sunday thronging closely together? I don't think so. Being at dinner with 12 people? Good heavens. Surely Matt Hancock will have something to say about that. A kiss in the Garden of Gethsemane? I don't think so. So much that we simply take for granted. So much that is a part of our Gospel. But of course, whilst those times and our own time for most of our lives have been so different than they are this year, nevertheless the centrality of loss continues to be there and could not be told more powerfully than it is within Holy Week. The disciples, all that bigger group of followers, including the women who continued to stand at the foot of the cross and went early to the tomb, all those people who so loved Jesus experience before the resurrection the full totality of that loss, of that person in their lives. And it isn't a pointless um, experience, it isn't dwelling on something negative for the sake of it. It feels to me that God says, even when we are in those times, when we cannot do what we wish, and we miss so many things, and particularly people in our lives, there is still meaning within that. One of the best books ever written about this period uh, in the church's year is W.H. Banston, The Stature of Waiting. And he takes that idea that Jesus doesn't cease to do things simply because he is under the power of others. That willingness to experience loss of his freedom, separation from his followers, was and is part of the work of salvation. I'm sure that in these difficult times we have experienced moments of connection, perhaps at a distance, moments of prayer that have invaded perhaps that enforced stillness. When we stop, we are able to ask the question, where is God in this for me and for others? When we're too busy, we don't always find that moment of stillness. I hope that as we journey together in these days of Holy Week, you and I will find the time to be still, to think about what it means to experience the loss of things we take for granted, to be reminded, I hope, and to be touched by the love of God, who loves us whether we work nine to five and change the world, or whether we are simply still and know that in the moments when we stop, it seems to me, God often comes to us unbidden and indeed unexpected. Amen. And so let us pray. the stillness of our hearts we bring before you ourselves, our souls, our minds and bodies. We offer you ourselves afresh today. We give you thanks that we can meet in this place that contains the memories of so many others who have gone before us with the sign of faith. For all those who in their day travelled through difficult times and continue to remain faithful to you. May their witness and the witness of the Church continue to stir our hearts and may we seek you this day and all days. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we pray for your Church throughout the world. We pray for Stephen, our Archbishop, 
We pray for the clergy of the Diocese of York, for all those who hold lay office within churches, and especially in this Church of St Andrews during the vacancy. We ask your blessing upon those who continue to hold the space for stillness, for music, for prayer and worship. We pray for this parish of Bishop Thorpe, for all who live here, and especially for any who are in need, for those who are bereaved or sorrowful, and for any who are troubled in body, mind or spirit. Lord, may they know your comfort as it comes through the good wishes and the care of others. We give thanks for all who work to relieve suffering in this country and around the world. As we journey through this pandemic, we pray for all who work in health and social care. We pray for political leaders, Her Majesty the Queen, and for all who hold office both nationally, regionally and locally. May they work together for the common good, and may they seek and strive to meet the needs of those who have least, and for any who are in desperate need. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for Christian people throughout the world. On this Palm Sunday and as we enter Holy Week, may it be a time of renewal, we pray for those who are preparing for baptism or confirmation in these days. For any who have offered their life or have offered their life afresh to Jesus Christ. To seek to know in their own lives the truth of the Gospel. That great love given to the world and of which we are a part. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we remember especially today all who are bereaved. Those who are known to us and those who are not. For all who find today a love which is measured by loss. Lord, may your spirit and presence be a source of compassion and strength. And may all who grieve know that those who they have loved are now in your keeping, and that, if sought, your presence is close to all those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. And so we commend ourselves and all Christian people to God's unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you like to stand for the peace, which obviously we will not be physically exchanging, but you are allowed to look. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Jesus, true wine and bread of life, ever giving yourself that the world might live. Let us share your death and passion. Make us perfect in your life. Amen. The Lord is here. Yes. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them down to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Give us right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, Father, to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus Christ, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of our hands, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son of the Christ, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son of the Christ. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and wash the guilt clean. This is his story. This, this is our song. Hosanna in the past. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This, this is our song. Hosanna in the past. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood, shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our son, the the son and the sons. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our son, the son and Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself to, in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Faithful God, may we who share this banquet glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation, life and hope, who reigns as Lord now and notices Stephen or oh there are copies of pew sheets in the porch yeah. so new house group meeting after Easter and the days will vary during the month so that everybody has it. Uh, I'm assuming the next service in church then will be a week today that's correct well I'm very pleased I'm back with you again for Easter Sunday so uh, I'm sorry I shan't be able to mingle and meet with you properly after the service um, but I do wish you well this week and look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Yeah. Coffee on Zoom at 11 30. If you, yeah, you, if, have <laughs> you have to run home. <laughs> Lovely. May the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you by faith to his eternal life. Amen. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, Keep you steadfast as you walk with him in the way of his cross. Amen. May the Spirit who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share in his glory, set your minds on life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>